All right, so let me go ahead and start with a little bit of an introduction. So I'm gonna say a few words such as bipartisan. So guys, just so you know, when I say the word bipartisan, that is an agreement and compromise between two major political parties. So we know that there are two major ones here in the United States, the Democrats and the Republicans. When they both agree on the same issue, that's what we call bipartisan. Okay, so that's one example. If I say the word allocate, that just means to set aside. So say I got a big bowl of fries, or we won't say fries, um, say I got a big bowl of chips. Um, I don't wanna eat all of them at one time, so I set aside a smaller bowl for later. So I'm allocating myself chips for later. Jurisdiction, that is just a power to exercise authority. So I have jurisdiction over my pet cat. I get to decide what he can and can't do. I get to decide if he can go outside or if he cannot go outside. So that is what a jurisdiction is, okay? So you have jurisdiction over maybe your toys. You get to decide where you put your toys or when you get to play with them, kind of things like that. All right, liable. That's to be responsible for something. So for example, your parents are liable for you. They are responsible for what you do. Um, and then finally, another term is exploitation. That just means to make use of something. So um, when you exploit something, that means that you are, say, fishing. You're exploiting that resource in fishing. So when I say those terms, that's what that means. Um, I won't be saying them too much, so don't worry if you miss that part. Um, go ahead, if you have the worksheets, go ahead and get this worksheet out here. This is worksheet number one. It's all the terms and the different protected areas that you're gonna learn about. I'm gonna teach you guys about these, uh, I think, I believe 10 major terms. Um, and they are pretty prevalent in most of our lives in some way. So we'll go ahead again and get that out. And as I tell you the definitions for these terms here, you can mark the letter to that definition. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's first talk about marine protected areas. So a marine protected area is kind of an umbrella term. So it's a large term for a bunch of other things. So a marine protected area is basically anything on or near the marine environment, so the ocean, that has protections. So that's it. A, a marine protected area, or what I'm going to be calling an MPA from now on, so MPA equals marine protected area, that is just anything, any area on or near uh, marine environments that have protections. So whether it's no fishing, whether it's uh, no entry, that is a MPA, a marine protected area. So it's a very, very overall term. And there's a lot of things that can go underneath it. I'll talk about this again at the end, but there is, I think this is worksheet three. Here is where you can actually select a marine protected area in your in or near your location, wherever you are, or just a protected area. So you'll learn about other areas that are just protected, not just marine related. Um, but this worksheet here, you can actually pick a marine protected area or just a protected area. So maybe just like a national park. Um, and you can actually do some research on it and learn about it. But I'll talk more about that later. All right, let's learn about our second type of protection area that we have here. So our second protection area that we have is called a no take zone. So guys, a no take zone is pretty obvious. It's an area where you cannot take anything. So if you're in a no take zone, you cannot take anything. That means that you cannot even take a shell. You can't take the sand, you can't take the shell, you can't take a fish. So a no take zone, you can't take anything. It's, it's pretty easy to remember that one. Um, so again, guys, look on that worksheet, try to find where the definition lines up to no take zone. All right. The next one is a research natural area. So this is kind of strange sounding, but again, it's pretty straightforward. A research natural area is just an area set aside only for approved research. So this is an area somewhere in the environment um, that isn't set aside just for researchers to be able to look and learn different things. So again, guys, a research natural area, or an RNA as we call it, is just an area set aside for research purposes only. Okay. The next one is an ecological reserve or ecological reserve, whichever way you want to say that. So an ecological reserve is an area selected to be representative of special ecosystems and to be preserved in a natural condition. All right. So again, guys, an ecological 
Lago Reserve is an area selected because it's got a special ecosystem and they want to preserve it and keep it as natural as possible. Now your ecological reserves can have several different types of rules and regulations. It just depends on what type of area you're talking about. So not all ecological reserves are the same. The next one is a sanctuary preservation area. So a sanctuary, sanctuary preservation area is a small area where certain activities are restricted or regulated. Um, so again, it's a smaller area within a bigger area. The best example I can give you is down here. We have a very big coral reef. We have the third largest in the world. It goes from Miami all the way to the dry Ugas. Um, however, you know, there are many little smaller reefs within that big coral reef that have their own protections. So some reefs within our big reef, so we have smaller reefs that have their own names like hens and chickens or alligator reef or American shoal, Lou Key, San Eastern dry rocks. All of these have different protections. Some you can fish at, some you cannot. Um, and so there are what we call spas, sanctuary protected areas, and they're managed by the sanctuary, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. Um, but some examples down here are Lou Key, for example, Sand Key, Rock Key, Eastern dry rocks. That's where we go a lot here at Reef Relief. Um, those are all smaller reefs that have their own little protection. So and those particularly, you can't fish, you cannot anchor, so you have to tie it to a mooring buoy instead. You can't take anything. All right, then we have a National Wildlife Refuge. So those of you that may not live uh, near the ocean probably have one of these somewhere. A National Wildlife Refuge is a protected public land set aside to conserve wildlife. And it's actually managed by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, so they manage, it's just public land that has been set aside to manage to some way. Maybe there's managed hunting, limited hunting, or no hunting, something like that. Um, so an example down here in the Keys is an area in Big Pine. Um, we have an area set aside to protect our key deer, so the little small deer that we have. Um, so it's not necessarily ocean related, but it is a protected area. All right, so we also have Special use areas. So a special use area is just an area that is set aside for scientific research, educational purposes, restoration, monitoring, or just a smaller area that kind of confines things. Um, a lot of our smaller reefs down here actually will have a special use area next to it where you can't really go into um, unless you have like a special permit. And they actually use that special use area to compare the that area to an area with much more people have visited. Um, so in Luki, they have a little area like that and they can compare the coral coverage in the area that people visit compared to the area where no one really visits. Um, other examples of special use areas are areas where different nonprofits have little coral nurseries. So they'll actually grow coral in the ocean um, and those little nurseries are like a special use area. All right, guys, we also have wildlife management areas. So this is another one that you probably have even if you don't live near the ocean. So a wildlife management area, again, guys, I, if you have this worksheet, I hope you guys are having a good, um, it's easy for you guys to fill this out. So a wildlife management area is a land managed for both recreation and conservation. So a wildlife management area, um, that's especially for those that like to go hunting, um, that definitely has different regulations for hunting what you can and can't do on that public area. Down here, a lot of our islands are wildlife management areas. Um, so you can't go into a certain area because of bird nesting or sea turtle nesting, things like that. All right, and finally, our last two kind of protected area terms that we have are national parks. So again, guys, you if, even if you don't live in the ocean, you probably live near-ish to a national park. A national park is an area of natural, historic, or scientific importance and it's been set aside and is maintained by a national government. So national parks are maintained by the national government. State parks are pretty much the same thing. They have the same purpose, except they're controlled by the individual state. Um, so we have a lot of state parks here in the state of Florida. I love going to them, um, but they are controlled by the state, whereas national parks are controlled by the national United States government. So hopefully that clarifies things a a little bit. What is not a branch in the United States government? 
So guys, we're getting a little bit into policy today. What is not a branch in the United States government? Is it the legislative branch, the executive branch, the exploratory, or the judiciary branch? What? Yeah, so most of you got it. The answer is exploratory. So there is not an exploratory branch in the United States government. Okay. So we do have a legislative branch. We have an executive branch and a judiciary branch. We do not have an exploratory branch. I'm not going to get too much into this. Um, but I do want you guys to understand a few of our very important environmental groups um, that we have in this country. So we're going to go under the executive branch. In the executive branch, we have four main departments. So in the Department of Agriculture, we have the USDA, and then we have the Forest Service. Okay. In the Department of Commerce, which is under the executive branch, we have NOAA. Um, so maybe you guys heard of NOAA before. We also have the National Weather Service. The people that tell us what's going on, they tell us about hurricanes, tell us about everything going on weather-wise. They are under the Department of Commerce, which is under the executive branch of the government, as is NOAA Fisheries and the National Marine Sanctuary. Um, so keep that in mind because that's what we're going to be talking about um, next. Then you also have the Environmental Protection Agency, which is another section underneath the executive branch. So the PA has their own section. They're a very, very big group and they deal with a lot of the, the uh, rules and limitations and things that we can do, um, and especially with factories and things like that. Um, a lot of our rules and stuff come from them. All right, another group from the executive branch is the Department of Interior. So in the Department of Interior, I have to zoom in here so I can read that out for you guys. In the Department of Interior, you have the National Park Service. So again, guys, National Park Service is under the Department of the Interior, and which is under the executive branch, so controlled by the government. We have the Department of Interior, uh, Bureau and Land Management, so land management pretty much. Um, so that goes underneath that. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services are also under the Department of Interior, as is the Geological Survey as well. Um, so they're under that Department of Interior. So just something to note that your National Marine Sanctuaries and NOAA are not in the same section as the National Parks and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, so that's good to know. Um, but you guys don't have to remember that. That was just something I wanted to let you guys know about really quickly. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about MPAs. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history, tell you about the ones down here, and then I'm going to tell you about some other ones around the world, that way you can fill out this worksheet here. So the goal of an MPA is to protect the marine ecosystems that are threatened by human activity, such as overfishing. Um, so these MPAs help control what's going on with humans right now. It puts rules with us so that way we can't exploit that area too badly. Um, an MPA may also be established to protect underwater, archaeological sites, shipwrecks, and other historically important places. There is one place that I have on this map that I'll teach you guys about that was made in MPA because of all the shipwrecks it has. There are about 1,700 or 1,700 MPAs in the United States, so that's a lot. And that's only about 41% of the nation's marine waters. So only 41% of our marine waters are in MPA. Um, but still, 1,700 MPAs, that's actually a good amount. One thing to know about that in 1972, we passed the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuaries Act. So it was created by the U.S. Congress and signed by President Nixon. And he created the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuaries Act in 1972. Okay. Um, so pretty much it just says that we have the power to create marine sanctuaries. Now, in 1976, we have what we call the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act as well. That's another very, very important um, piece of legislative material that we've had in history. Um, it was a bipartisan bill, so both Republicans and Democrats worked together to make it, and it created American jurisdiction over fishing in the ocean. So it determined pretty much what water is ours. So guys, if you've ever been on the coast and you've gone out on the boat, you've kind of wondered, when am I no longer in America? America, maybe. Um, so it actually determines what is the boundary for the United States. What part of the ocean can we control? What part of the ocean can we not control from our shoreline? 
So it was very, very important. But the goal was also to prevent overfishing and to rebuild a lot of the fish populations that have just kind of disappeared. And now that kind of leads us into the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. So down here, um, we most of our waters is part of a National Marine Sanctuary, which is a MPA, it's a marine protected area. So guys, in 1960, we had John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park. That was the country's first underwater state park. Um, if you guys have ever been to Penna Camp, it's in Largo. It's very, very pretty. Um, so that was the first underwater park in the United States. Then in 1975, they created the Key Largo National Marine Story, which was right next to it, um, because they needed more protection. They needed to protect this area more. All right, we right that right around that time period when there was a lot of commercial fishing happening down here, and we really started to deplete and lose a lot of our very important species. In 1981, we got the Lou Key National Marine Sanctuary. That's actually my favorite place to go. If you guys ever get the chance to come visit the Florida Keys, I highly recommend you go to Lou Key. Um, if you guys are bored after this, look up videos that were taken at Lou Key. It's very, very pretty. Then in 1989, I've had the last straw in the Florida Keys. There's actually three big ships that crash within about a month or two of each other on our barrier reef here in the Florida Keys. So we had three big ships that all all within a month, actually, actually I think two, two or three weeks, all within two or three weeks, shipwrecked onto our coral reef and destroyed the boat and destroyed a lot of coral. That was just kind of the final straw that we can't have that happen again. So in 1989, we have more bipartisan recognition. So again, Republicans and Democrats worked together and they decided that we need to do something to protect this awesome reef that we have here in the Florida Keys. Again, guys, third largest barrier reef in the world. Very important. Um, so in 1990, we created a sanctuary down here. And when they created the sanctuary, it was important that we listened to the people that make a living down here, that rely on this as a food source, that rely on this for recreation. So they try to work with everyone to make some sort of decision and some sort of rule book as to what we can and can't do. For those of you that live down here in the Keys, it's important to know that the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is actually creating a new blueprint, so a new rule book for the sanctuary. Um, and they've been working on that for the past few years. Now, guys, if any of you have ever been down here and been to the Dry Tortugas National Park, that was created in 1992. 99 square miles and it was created to protect fish populations in the dry tortugas and to distinguish between a healthy coral reef and our coral reefs that have been more impacted by humans off of the florida keys the dry tortugas is actually 70 miles west of key west so it's about a two and a half hour boat ride okay guys now on our last part so sorry thank you for being with me on all that go ahead and get this worksheet out if you can you guys can already fill out one of these answers. So I already told you where number one is. Oops, you can't see that. I already told you guys where number one is. So go ahead and look at the bottom here. If you don't have your worksheet, go ahead and tell me which one do you think number one would be? Okay, guys, so this is Florida right here. That's Florida, the keys are right there. Now guys, just so you know, if you have this worksheet, the numbers are kind of an estimate on the area. It was hard to make it very accurate because the map is kind of basic. So this general area, number one, where would the answer be? All right, think about it. If you were gonna guess this one right here, so there we go, oh, there we go. Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, you are correct. So again, guys, number one is the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. So that's where it's located. That's where I am located right now. Go ahead. If you do have this map, go ahead and fill out your continents really quickly if that helps you out. If you don't need to fill out the continents, uh, that's fine. You don't have to. And I'm going to teach you guys about the different um, MPAs that we have listed here. So again, guys, all of these MPAs throughout the world, and as I teach you about them, you can go ahead and mark them down as to where you think they are, okay? So again, we know that number one 
is the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. All right, so the next one, this is going to be a little hard for me to pronounce. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to try to get it correct. So it's Papahau Nau Muku Akea. So again, very hard to pronounce. Um, you guys want to see the also poll question. Where do you think it's located? All right, so check out this poll here. Um, you can see why I have a hard time pronouncing it. You guys can try to say it out loud uh, at your house now if you want to. I had to Google how to say it. Um, but where do you think it's located? All right, guys, good. So most of you are getting this one. It's in Hawaii. So again, guys, I'll help you with this one here. Number three here is going to be, there you go, number three, that is where it's located. So near Hawaii. So this is a Marine National Monument. It's 583 square miles. It supports 7,000 different species. It was created in 2006. And again, guys, it's found in Hawaii. All right. Okie dokie. Now the next one, the Palau National Marine Sanctuary. So the Palau National Marine Sanctuary is located in Palau. Um, Palau is north of Australia. It's in the Indo-Pacific. Um, um, so Pacific Ocean, it's by just a bunch of different islands. If you've ever heard of the country Guam, uh, Palau is very close to Guam. So the Palau National Marine Sanctuary was created in 2015. It protects 80% of the nation's um, marine territory. So 80% of that country's oceans that they can control is protected. It's 193,000 square miles. And there is absolutely no fishing or mining that can take place here. So pretty much, guys, the waters of Palau, the country Palau, you cannot fish at all. They decided that their fish there are worth much more alive than dead. So they really don't have much of a fishery in their waters. Uh, if they have commercial fishermen, it's in the outside waters. They've decided to protect their entire ocean area from all these different human impacts. So it's very beautiful. I actually, actually snorkeled there when I was a lot younger and it is one of the most beautiful places in the entire world. All right, our next one is the Rossi Protected Area. So this is the largest MPA. It is 600,000 square miles. It is um, in Antarctica. So look at your map, find where Antarctica is and find which one that would be. This one definitely isn't a perfect location as to where it really is because it's a flat map. Um, but where do you think, which one, what number do you think would be the Ross Sea Protected Area? Again, it is in Antarctica and it's supported by 24 different countries. So 24 different countries in the world decided that this area needed to be protected. And now it's the largest MPA that we have. It was created in 2016 and you can there. So it's just a big protection so people cannot fish and take things and exploit that area. All right, then we have Prince Edward Islands Marine Protected Area. So the Prince Edward's Islands Marine Protected Area is located off of South Africa, a group of little islands off of South Africa. So which one do you think that, what one would that be? Which one would be just south of South Africa? It was created in 2013. It is 70,000 square miles. And it was actually created to protect the Patagonian toothfish. Uh, if you guys look up what a Patagonian toothfish is, it's a very strange looking fish. They don't look that great. Um, but it was created to protect those fish and to prevent um, seabird bycatch. So there's a lot of fishing going on in that area. So much that that um, Patagonian toothfish was actually declining rapidly. It's a very, very important base of the food line um, thing in our food chain. So that was a very important fish for a lot of our animals, our seabirds, our mammals, our sharks, things like that wanted to eat this fish. And if you lose the bottom of the food chain, everything else cannot eat. All right, guys, remember that. Um, so they protected this area, they could protect that fish. Then we have Mariana's Trench National Monument. So you guys have learned about Mariana Trench a few times. So where do you think the Mariana Trench National Monument would be? So guys, the Mariana's Trench is near the Philippines. It's kind of, it's in the Pacific Ocean, north of Palau. It's 95 square miles and was created in 2009. 
It's actually controlled by the United States. It's got three units, the island unit, the trench unit, and the volcanic unit. So again, guys, Mariana Trench Marine National Monument is 95 square miles, and it's near the Philippines north of the Palau Marine Sanctuary. It's in the Pacific Ocean. Here's a really interesting one. So guys, we have Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. It's actually located in Michigan. So what number do you think would that be? What number would be near Michigan? Now, Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary is um, in Lake Huron's Thunder Bay in Michigan, okay? So it's got 116 historically significant shipwrecks. So guys, remember, your MPAs don't just have to protect the fish and the other animals that live in the ocean. This was actually created to protect all the shipwrecks in that area. 116 historically important shipwrecks are found in this marine sanctuary. It's about 4,300 square miles or 4,300 square miles. And it was created in the year 2000. So guys, just because Michigan's all the way up there, they still have a marine sanctuary, an MPA, okay? Then we have the Galapagos Marine Reserve. So the Galapagos, where do you think that would be? So where do you guys think the Galapagos would be? What number would that be on here? All right. So guys, the Galapagos Marine Reserve is 51,000 square miles and was created in 1998. It is near Ecuador. So you have to fly into Ecuador to get to the Galapagos. It's a very, very beautiful place. Um, it's on my bucket list of places to go. I've got a few friends that have gone there and it's gorgeous. They have so many some amazing things there. They have a lot of beautiful wildlife. All right, then we have the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Guys, go ahead and in the comments, say where do you think the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park would be located by? Where do you think that would be located? So guys, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is 132,000 square miles. It was established in 1985. It is the world's largest barrier reef, okay? So where do you think the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park would be? What number? If you guys guessed Australia, you are correct. So Australia is where the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is located. And our final one on this map here, guys, remember, there's a lot of marine park uh, in the world. I just chose 10 here. The final one is the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. So on our final one, where do you think that would be located? Where do you think Monterey Bay would be? What number? Monterey Bay, I'll give you guys a hint, is in California. So what number do you think would be closest to California? So the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, it's off of California. It was created in 1992, and it is 4,000 square miles. So just to finish up, again, here is this worksheet here. This is actually really cool. You don't have to print out. You can do it on your computer or in a notebook. Um, but this just kind of does a little review about what an MPA is and why they're important. But then on the second section here, it gives you the opportunity to pick a protected area near you. So whether it's a sanctuary, a state park, a national park, whatever it is, a protected area, um, choose one and learn more about it. So you'll probably have to use a computer, but you'll pick an area. So for me, Maybe I'll go with the Dry Tortugas National Park because I think it's a beautiful place and I love going there. I'd put that here. So where is it located? It is located 70 miles west of Key West. When was it established? So I told you guys 1992. How much area does it cover? 99 square miles. What organisms might you find in this area? So for me, I've been there so I can easily list a bunch of animals that I could see there, like sea turtles, sharks, parrotfish. Um, but for your area, you know, if you've never been there, look up some pictures, look up the website, all right? Are there any specific rules or regulations that are important to that area? So in the Dry Tortugas um, National Park, you can't fish there, you cannot take things. So that's a very, very important thing. Um, maybe in like your smaller state park, you can't, you could do something else. Um, whatever your area has, go ahead and write that down. And guys, if you don't want to pick something near you, if you want to pick something that's that I mentioned, maybe the Ross Sea one in Antarctica, go ahead and do that. Um, it's just a chance for you guys to learn about a new place. Um, and then finally, you have, can you identify who is responsible for that area? So in my example, the Dry Tortugas, it is run by the National Park Service, and which is the national government. And then finally, 
finally, any additional important or interesting facts? So on the Dry Tortugas National Park, I can say that there's a giant fort called Fort Jefferson out there. So that is one thing as well. So guys, go ahead and pick something that you wanna learn more about. Maybe it's something near your home, in your state. Maybe it's something that you just wanna learn more about, the ecosystem, um, and fill out that paper. I wanna thank you guys so much for listening and learning with me today. We're gonna to be talking on Wednesday about marine rescue and rehabilitation. So what do people do when they receive an animal that is injured? What are some injuries that they have to do with? Things like that. All right, guys, so thank you again so much for learning with me. Hopefully the video was better quality this time. Hopefully there were not technical issues. Uh, thank you, guys.